how, how is it loving for all of us to have come to a planet that's descended to the hells? Okay. Good question. And, but the question really is driven by this idea or concept that perhaps God hasn't been loving. Whereas what I would do is I'd, I'd make the assumption that perhaps humans haven't been loving first. <laughs> Does that make sense? Let's look at what God created originally. What God created originally was two, like a perfect human habitation that didn't, uh, earth, that did not have people on it. Right? It had in a complete environment where there was enough food, the appropriate systems in terms of weather and all of those other systems, the appropriate food production systems and everything were all present before mankind came into existence. The very first human couple that came into existence, if you talk to them, they were Ammon and Amman, the people that the Bible refers to as Adam and Eve, right? The male I am, the female I am. Now, when they arrived on earth, they arrived in a perfect physical condition. They had no physical ailments, no physical sickness. Even though diseases did exist on the planet, right, and bacteria existed on the planet and so forth, they had the ability to basically prevent any of those things from harming themselves through their condition. They also had the, at this potential point of time, they had the potential to receive God's love. And I say the potential because they did not choose to engage that potential. But they had the potential. God offered them the potential of receiving God's love. And they knew it. They knew it was available to them, actually. And when you talk to them... They realised that they know God, knew God's love was available and they also knew their condition was perfect. And if you talk to them now, they think that our condition on earth now is terrible. They think most of us are very ugly in comparison to what they were at the time. Uh, oftentimes we're out of proportion in a lot of ways. Um, even down to you know how our left and right sides are all out of proportion generally. They're not, well, they had perfect physical symmetry um, so that they and they understood how much of the things in the earth around them worked through experience but they had a very developed intellect they used a hundred percent of their brain so we use what how much of our brain scientists say ten percent and there's now estimates that it might even be just as low as two percent of our brain and um, so so yeah, how about that? Like, and, but they used 100% of their brains. So they had the ability to reason logically and uh, with, with clarity uh, much more than we did at the time. Now, the problem that it was is they became so enamoured with their own condition that they believed that they did not need God's love in order to grow. So a belief inside of them began developing through the condition of arrogance. You see, each of these qualities have to be developed, even if we're in a perfect condition. So God started us off in a perfect condition, the human race, and each of these qualities still have to be developed. They chose to not develop some of these qualities through their choice. As a result of their choice, their condition degraded. <clears throat> As their condition degraded, so too did the condition of their progeny. Now, who is to blame for that occurring? Is God to blame for them making their choice? No. So God gave them the gift of free will. So you could say the only way God is to blame for them making this choice is that God gave them the gift of free will and that enabled them to make this choice. If God had never given them the gift of free will, then they wouldn't have been able to make that choice. But then they wouldn't be what we are. They wouldn't be human. They wouldn't be the highest of God's creation. They'd be like an animal 
because animals don't have the same kind of choices that we have. So the only way that God is responsible for mankind making the choice is by giving God, them a gift of free will. And you could say, in a way, that's like me giving you a knife to cut up your veggies. If you go out and stab somebody with that knife, am I responsible for the gift of the knife? If you have free will, surely it's your responsibility how you use that will. Now, the result of that, the use of will out of harmony with love has ended up with the world we currently have. It's not what God wants us to do, but God honours the fact that we're allowed to choose it. And the fact that new souls, when they incarnate, are a part of that system is unavoidable from God's perspective. Do you understand? And the reason why it's unavoidable is because man made the choice. We could make a different choice. So you and I can make a different choice, but also collectively we can make a different choice. For example, worldwide we could make a choice to never go to war again for any reason and be willing to die for that choice. In other words, be willing, my willingness to not go to war means that somebody else might come and kill me and I'd be okay with that. I could make that choice. Now, if I made that choice, can you see eventually, if everyone made that choice, we would have a different world, wouldn't we? But it requires everyone making the choice. And the only reason why we have the world that we currently have is because everyone has chosen to make a different choice. A choice to not love. That's the only reason why we have the world we currently have. Now, the problem for us is this. Collectively and also historically, mankind has made the choice to not love. And even right now, many of us in our day-to-day -day lives are still making the choice to not love. And many times we're not even aware of these choices, but a lot of times we are aware. We know we're making a choice to not love, and yet we still choose it. What we've got to learn to do is to use our will to make a different choice. And in fact, the main reason why Mary and I and others of the 14 came back to earth is to illustrate to mankind the results of making a different choice. Does that make sense? The main reason why we returned was not... We want to show what it's like to make a choice of love in an unloving world. See, a lot of people on earth today believe that it's not possible to make a loving choice in an unloving world. But it is. It is possible. You've just got to have courage right, to make a different choice. Now, if we make a different choice, we will have an earth that's very, very different. And in future generations, if all of us make a different choice, we can get to the point where not a single child who incarnates onto this planet has any illness, any disease, any problems emotionally, physically, spiritually or otherwise. Just from our choice. But if we don't have some form of feedback system about our choices, we will make choices that are unloving without any consequence. And we've got to see that the consequences of what we've created now are the results of the previous generation's choices to be unloving. And we've got to see the relationship. So incarnation at the moment is painful. It's a painful process, emotionally painful process. But only because we, humanity collectively, has made the wrong choice. The choice to not be loving. That's the choice we've made. And many of us individually are still making that choice to not be loving. We're still doing it. Right? And, and we make all sorts of excuses to do it. So, for example, we go to war. Your country gone to war 
many occasions in the last like 20 years, that's a choice that's collectively driven by all of the people in the country. Right? And a lot of times it's driven by the emotions of the people in the country, of fear. Fear that you won't have enough. Fear that your life as you know it will change. Fear, all sorts of fears come up and that causes us to make choices that are unloving. We can choose differently, but we're going to have to have courage to choose differently. So the reason why incarnation is, is at the moment a very painful process is because prior to us and this current generation of people have all made unloving choices. And that's the only reason why incarnation is in the state it currently is at the moment. It could be different, but it's going to involve us seeing the results of the choices we have collectively made and collectively deciding to change those choices. It also requires that we individually change, desire to change even when others don't want to. See, the majority of us don't want to do that. What we want is for everybody to change and then I'll change. And what I'm suggesting to you is you change and show everybody how to change. Show everybody that you can love in an unloving world. You can use your will in harmony with love every single time. Show people through your example that you can do that. That, it, that will be the start of the change. So you know how there's all these spiritual movements at the moment saying, oh, we're going to have this wonderful world in the future. And you, none of them have any real clear idea of how it's going to happen, right? They think that some people are going to come from outer space to do it or, you know, there's all sorts of theories of how it's going to occur. The way it's going to occur is by, by there being leaders of change who decide to use their will in harmony with God's love. That's how it's going to happen. And how long it takes will depend on how many people do that. But just one person doing it can change the world. In the first century, I chose to do that in an unloving world. And I was in my first incarnation, just like many of you are. So I chose to do it in an unloving world. I didn't make the excuse, oh, but it's all too hard because I've, all, I've come to an unloving world. I decided to have that relationship with God, desire to grow, change and become more loving, use my will to do so in an unloving world. And that's what I'm recommending for you to do, the same thing as that. When you do that, you will understand the reasons the real reasons why incarnation is so difficult today. You, because you, as you receive God's love, you start seeing the whole picture as to why it's turned out to be see, what it is now, seemingly quite bad. But it's actually the result of our historical and current unloving choices. So there's hardly a single person of us in this room that could say that we have changed all of the unloving choices of our own parents through our own actions. Uh, but that's what is going to be required of us if we, require, if we want the next generation of people who incarnate, the next generation of children to have an easier life, we are going to need to change. And if, we, if we're not prepared to do it for our own sake, in other words, we don't have enough love of ourselves to do it for ourselves, surely our love for others would ask us to do it. And particularly our love for our own children would ask us to do it. And if we can't do it for the sake of our own children, I doubt whether we're going to do it for any reason. And that's been the problem historically. The parents became selfish they chose to do a certain course of action out of harmony with God's love, but in harmony with their own will. 
that damaged the next generation of children. They saw the damage and yet did not correct its cause. They continued the process of damage. And then the next generation did the same, the next generation did the same. Because the reality is we don't care as much about our children as we believe we do. You know, in the average Western country, we slaughter a lot of them before they're even born. That's how little we really care about them. Uh, we bought them before they're even born. And, and the, re the reality is we beat them. You know, when they're little, we're violent towards them. We demonstrate our own condition to our own children and then hope that the next generation of people will have an easier life when they incarnate. It's not possible. We need to see what we create. And this is why God has made us personally responsible for what we create. So what we see on earth now is the direct result of God making us personally responsible for what we, humanity, has created. Does that make sense? And when we incarnate, if our parents really loved us, they would not have chosen to impose th their own emotional burdens and unloving condition on us, they would have made the choice to change. But they didn't. And so we're left with what we have. But we can make the choice to change. Does that help? So, not really. No, it didn't. No? I've heard you say that before. Um, and so what's the emotional problem you have with that? Well, I, I feel like my soul and every other soul that's come since Earth descended into the hells yeah. has been a sacrifice for all the people that are already here or came before us. Why? In what way do you feel they are a sacrifice? No, that, that I'm a sacrifice. You're the sacrifice? In what way do you feel you're the sacrifice? That I didn't have a, a choice to come here and I wasn't given like an equal opportunity that a man and a man had. So I don't feel like I was treated equally. You do have an equal opportunity to what a man and a man had. The opportunity, but not the environment. I mean, I, pe people are infertile now. I mean, lots of people are infertile. So why don't the laws make people infertile once we drop into the hells? Well, if that happened, the whole of humanity would have died within probably six to ten generations. And God would have had to create a whole new set of humanity after that. Well, there could be a lot of volunteers from the celestial kingdoms instead of... No, because putting... there was no one in the celestial kingdom at that point. <laughs> See, it's like there are always problems generally with the way we reason when we have certain emotions that are driving our feelings. So there's an emo what I'm trying to get at with yourself is there's an emotion you feel about this of unfairness and you feel this with God so can I make a suggestion to you about this get angry with God about it right? allow yourself to feel the emotion you feel about it right? see at the moment you're shutting down the emotion you feel about it looking for another intellectual explanation than, one's already, than one that's already been given you do not feel the explanation given is fair. Feel that. Because when you go through the feelings of that, you will actually release the emotion that blocks you to understanding. Does that make sense? And until you release the emotion that blocks you to understanding, no amount of explanation on my part will satisfy you. Well, I was hopeful because your explanation of faith broke through for me. Yeah. So at this stage, you don't necessarily have complete faith that God is good. You also, at this stage, do not understand the level of self-responsibility God has given you. And not only you, but every single person who's ever lived. And, and once you go through some of these emotions that you feel, 
you will understand that. You will feel the level of self-responsibility and then you'll understand better why God created it the way God created it. Does that make sense? At the moment, no amount of explanation on my part will help you overcome that because there's an emotion in you that blocks you to feeling the level of self-responsibility that you have for your own life. And the reason why most of the time people who ask me this question, I've been asked that question hundreds of times, as you can imagine. Most of the time people who ask me this question want somebody else to be responsible for their current condition, for having to feel about their current condition. Does that make sense? Now, the reality is that God's love will transform your current condition if you're open to receiving it. But at the moment, you're blocked to receiving it because you still feel the blame of God about what God created rather than just going through the emotion. And while that is felt within you, there will be a block to receiving. And when there's a block to receiving, God's love can't transform. And if God's love can't transform, then you're going to have a difficulty understanding. Does that make sense? Is it, it's all like a, what do you call it, a, a snowball effect on each other. They're all linked to each other. So this is the explanation of what happened. You feel that's unfair, so feel about that. Because that is one of the blockages to receiving love from God inside of you. You're hoping for a different explanation. One that you believe is more loving. But the trouble with some of your explanations is that uh, they would have all sorts of other problems associated with them. Does that make sense? There's all, all sorts of other illogical things that will be raised trying to find another explanation as, than the one that really happened. When you talk to this couple, um, you learn what really happened. And then you'll have feelings about what really happened. Let yourself feel the feelings about what happened. Let yourself feel your anger with them <laughs> and their current and their children. Let yourself feel some of the feelings that you have about, you know, your parents not making the choice to love and therefore you arriving in a better condition. Let yourself feel about those particular things. Once you feel about them, you will understand quite a lot of things, including the temporary nature of our life on earth in comparison with our internal future. Is there no point that the race will become infertile ever? I don't believe so. Um, infertility is caused by certain emotional conditions. And it's highly unlikely that every single person on the planet would have the same emotional condition with regard to infertility. Yeah. So it, it's highly unlikely that we'll become infertile and then die, sorry, die off as a result. But it's, um, it's an interesting theory you have. Write down all of the things as to why you want that to happen. <laughs> and then... Feel about what would be the results from God's perspective. Does that make sense? So while it may appear to be a solution to you at the moment, and it may appear to be that God should have done that, <laughs> the reality is there are quite a number of very significant and, uh, things that would have occurred as a result of that particular condition being reached. Yeah. Because the reality is, the human, if that had happened, the human race would have died off many tens of thousands of years ago and uh, you wouldn't have had the opportunity to come here at all under those circumstances. Well, it's a pretty big universe. <laughs> True, but, but the way God's created the incarnation process is that certain souls incarnate to, one, to a certain location. You, you your soul could not have in its first incarnation incarnated to another planet that had human life. It could only incarnate to this one. At some point in your future, you'll see the reasons why that occurred. Right? But that, that is a physical limitation of incarnation presently. And as a result of that, if, the, if humanity died off, then your potential incarnation could only have occurred by God creating another human couple 
And then what's to say that that human couple wouldn't have made the same decision that these made? It's possible they would have made the same decision. And then they would have all died off and then God would be forever creating new human couples to get it started when I feel the way God's done it is, is much more economical. <laughs> but allow yourself, it's the emotion inside of you of unfairness that, that is really being triggered here. Let yourself feel it. Let yourself feel it with God. Yeah. Then things will have more clarity. Thank you. Yeah.